Hey everyone, it's Emmanuel here, and I want to share with you a dream I had last night, which I think um, will help uh, um, a lot of us, and uh, including a message that I think God has given me, which will benefit you as well. Um, now, I'm not a like frequent, frequent, frequent dreamer, where I believe God sends me a lot of messages through dreams. Okay, I do have them, you know, once in a while, maybe sometimes every few months, every several months, and and um but when i do get one and i start like you know you know how when you go to bed and you have a lot of dreams but sometimes you know you know they really just don't really make a lot of sense but some of them you wake up and you wonder what mm, i wonder if there's a meaning to that dream and you start praying into it and god gives you um, a, a meaning interpretation um you know this is one of them okay and so um last night as i was sleeping i was um in this kind of like auditorium kind of deal and um and inside this auditorium there's a lot of people okay and i know like a lot of them are um believers okay and they're christians because i recognize some of the people uh there and i recognize the pastor there in one of the churches i've been to before and as i was going through the crowd um i noticed that there is a um tiger that is white and black striped okay black and white striped tiger with blue eyes okay so um i don't know what kind of what type of tiger that is okay so i just remember being like surprised why is this tiger obviously dangerous walking throughout the crowd and yet no one seems to be um concerned about that and so i was like weaving and going through the people not wanting to be near this tiger because obviously it's a it's not a good situation to be in and so as i was trying to really move through and i see this tiger kind of coming at me and and um i was moving through and i was at a point where um uh in the dream that i remember that uh you know the two huge teeth from the tiger one of the teeth sank into my left thigh and I remember it actually hurt. And when I woke up, that's the point where I woke up, okay? And when I woke up, it was actually a little bit of numb there too. So I think physically there's something that's going on. And in the dream, I think there's also a meaning there. And I remember in the dream that I didn't want to forcefully pull, um, pull, the, mouth, um, pull the mouth of that teeth of that tiger away from my thigh because I, I, I have a feeling that if I do that, then the tiger is going to really cling on even more. And so I just kind of left it. And I remember like calling on the name of Jesus, like asking God to help me. And I started feeling the pain. And at that moment, I woke up. And so when I woke up, I was like, um, you know, it sounds like I just have this feeling that, you know, maybe maybe there's some kind of meaning to this dream. I don't know what it is. I thought about it for a while. I couldn't understand it. And I, I you know, I go to shower and I start praying. And many times when I start praying in the shower, I get a lot of revelations and and uh, this and, and including this one. Um, and, and actually, there's a book that I, um, I've been, there's uh, like a book called uh, Understanding Dreams and Interpretation. So there are a lot of them out there in Christians. And the one, the, one I, the reason why I like this one is because um, they give some uh, reference to the verses in terms of, um, they give you some symbols in terms of when you dream, uh, what animals are, what numbers are, what colors are, what they all mean. And they give you some kind of verse to kind of back it up in the Bible. And sometimes, you know, not everything seems like making sense. But this one, when I read Tiger, it says, danger um it, it says um either um a i think it was something about um it could be for good or for bad okay and uh, it talks about like um a minister could be very powerful but in a good or in an evil way so when when i start reading i start thinking hmm like like what does that mean right let me try to see if i can find that uh definition here tiger danger powerful minister danger for the devil evil dangerous person good or evil so it could go go both way right and um and and when i was in the shower i was like you know what god um i really don't want to start thinking about this anymore because i've been thinking about this for like a little bit maybe like i don't know not a lot maybe 20 minutes a half an hour i'm like i don't even understand this but if it is from you okay because you know i was reading this guy who was saying like how you know um he used to have a lot of dreams and he discard them but um, one time a friend told him that a dream that he had is from God, but he doesn't understand it. And he started praying and God gave him inspiration. And that happened to me in the past too. So I was like, you know what, God, if this is from you, give me an inspiration to understand what this dream means and what I should do with it. 
Uh, other than that, I'm just going to pray for these people that I see in the dream. I guess this church, so some people there, and that's it. I'm not going to do anything about it. And so as I was praying this, you know, I was in the shower. Uh, and then after I prayed this in the washroom, I went to the shower. And that was maybe like within a few minutes. I started, sh I started praying, and I was, I was like showering. And, and I heard the voice in my head, okay? It was not like... It was not like audible like me talking to you right now. It was just a thought that came to my head. And uh, it was something to the effect that um, do not bring your previous notion, okay, and your previous hurts of whatever it is into new places that you go to. Now, I understood that in the context of tomorrow because I was actually, um, I was actually invited tomorrow to um, preach at a church where uh, sharing about um, God's power and healing and all that. And... Growing in the um, growing in the um, evangelical circles, um, more of the conservative sides, and they're very good in biblical teaching and things like that. But in terms of things of the Holy Spirit and, and divine healing and all that, they they're n really not really on board. Um, at best, um, a lot of um, people which are very great hard, they love the Lord and they do the, the things of God, but they just may just say that they believe God will heal. They say that they believe that God will. You know, have power in the things of the Holy Spirit, but when it comes to actually practicing it and doing it, there's still a lot of strongholds and doubts. And uh, yes, but that kind of deal, right? So as I've been growing up, you know, ever since I got baptized in the Holy Spirit in 2008, and I start encountering the power of God and learning how to operate and and healing and deliverance and all that, it's just um, I I wasn't really well received, and and so me personally, um, I'm 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 the type of person that I uh, you know. I'm okay after a couple of days. Like when when someone come against me, I may it may hit me for maybe in the beginning, but afterwards I'm like, you know what? It really doesn't matter to me. Um, you know, this is the things of God. I mean, if if He's doing it, I mean, I'm not gonna. You know, obviously, you know, I'm gonna try to show you what it says in the Bible. But if I'm not gonna go in at great lengths to argue over this, it's just not worth it. And even and even in life, right? In, in business, I'm kind of person like, all right, I'm I'm moving with or without you. If you don't see the purpose, you don't see the, um, you know, what we're trying to do here. You don't see the mission, you don't see the purpose, then you know what? It, it, I guess you got something else you, you're going to have to do. So that's my personality, right? But I guess also comes with that is my preconceived notion of how people are and what they may think. And so when I'm going into the, the preaching tomorrow, I think what God's trying to remind me is don't take my quote-unquote baggage or what I think other people think about divine healing or about the power of God into these group of people. Because every time you go into a new setting, um, these people will be different. And if you bring a preconceived notion or your baggage with you to everywhere you go, I'm sure you talk to some people, right? They're just so like negative from the get-go, even when you start meeting them. And um, I remember some of these are like missionaries and these are like ministers and they're like obviously in their senior years. And and I've talked to uh, more than more than one and that, you know, surprisingly, um, it seems that like the, the uh, there's at least a couple I can I can remember talking to them that you can just see when you, when you talk to them, you can hear the hurt, you can hear the baggage. And and I feel like God's trying to remind me, don't do that. Don't be that person where you're just, you know, you can just, just sounding negative and people just don't want to be around you. And you, when you feel like you want to encourage people, you actually discourage people. Like, I don't, want, I don't want to be that way. So I think that's what God's trying to say to me. Like, don't bring your preconceived notions about certain things, even though you've been like kind of bitten and hurt by... Um, this tiger in my dream, so to speak, right? And and what's interesting to me in this dream is that like no nobody else is realizing this. They're like the tiger is weaving through the the, the audience and everything, the crowd. Nobody seems to realize this, and I and uh, and I'm like that's amazing. I mean, like I can understand that. And so um so anyway, my encouragement to you and I is um, number one, if you get a dream from God. Or what you don't know if it's a dream from God, pray and ask God for an inspiration or an interpretation. That's exactly what you know Joseph did. Okay, uh, he interpreted the dream, uh, the dreams of uh, Pharaoh. Okay, and uh, he got promoted to the highest place. So who knows if God will use you and your interpretation to do great things for the kingdom of God? So don't just discard it. Ask God for interpretation. Dreams still happen today. Meanings still happen today. I've gotten them repeatedly uh, on mission trips uh, at home any places. You don't have to be a quote-unquote pastor, apostle, prophet, or whatever it is. You know, normal daily believers like you and me. I mean, at the end of 2014, okay, in October 2014, God led me to um, be a light in the marketplace. So quote-unquote, I'm not really a 
um, quote unquote, like pastor in the four corners of the church. And quite frankly, I'm quite enjoying um, my vocation here and just being in the marketplace and excelling in business and being an influence to other people and, and standing up for the Christian faith when uh, in business, a lot of people are not are standing up for anything other than the Christian faith. So I'm enjoying what I do and, and, and excelling in that and, and helping other people along the way. So am I in that four corner pastor and all that kind of, no, not really. Um, but God's still speaking to me that way. Um, from time to time, and I, I'm sure if we dig deeper and we seek God, and you know He's gonna, um, He's going to, um, you know, give us more as we open ourselves. So definitely pray and seek God. He's gonna give you directions in your life, and He's gonna help you and remind you and help others along the way. And secondly, um, uh, beyond you know asking God for interpretations of dream and not discarding them is. Um, again, like when you go into any situation, just don't prejudge anything. I mean, how many have been in situations where you think you know what people want, but um, or what people like, and you presume a situation, and it's actually not true. Uh, so one recent example is I was at the church, and you know, worship's going on, and some people are coming in, and there's um, a person that told me, "Hey, you got a nice tan, right?" So in the Western culture, um, if you get a tan, that's a nice thing, right? Um, they say that females who have uh, a good tan uh, looks healthy and attractive, right? For me, as an Asian, as a Chinese, you know, it's the opposite. I actually don't find tanned, uh, uh, um, being tanned an attractive thing. Me, when I pray for a wife, I told God, God, I really want, uh, uh, one of the attributes is um, that she's going to be a pale complexion. <laughs> I know some of you are going to say, man, man, that's so superficial. Listen, that's not the only thing I pray for. The three main things I pray for, number one, is that uh, I will be uh, attracted to my wife physically, and that includes uh, the pale uh, complexion. Number two is that um, uh, we can serve God together. Okay, so um, she's going to be there to support me, to, to, to minister, and, and to do the will of God, and she and she's exactly that. She, she supports me. And um, and uh, the third one is that, you know, um, she's cheerful, and, and uh, we get along, that kind of deal. And Everything has met that um, in, in my wife right now, so I thank God. Um, so if you want to pray for a spouse, by the way, you know, be specific. <laughs> like that's going to be another uh, video. So anyway, what I'm trying to say is that person th thought that I think being tanned or or other people assuming being tanned is a great thing, whereas I don't perceive that with my culture. So when you bring in preconceived notion about certain things that you think may be true, whether it's in your work, in your school place, in business, right? Some people who are in sales, they'll say like, sometimes people would assume certain people are, are, are wanting certain things. You go into a car dealership, they look at you and they assume you want a certain type of car, right? They look at a young person, they're like, okay, this guy wants a fast sports car. When, in fact, the guy um, just came in by himself, he just got married maybe um, about a year or two, and then he got a new baby, he wants a minivan. So they just misjudge that person. You see what I mean? Um, misjudging and uh, having preconceived notion can actually have a bad effect on every area of your life, spiritually, physically, in your work in every area. So that's something to be um, aware of, okay? Not having preconceived notion. And thirdly, uh, to remember is, may you and I be reminded that um, we don't want to bring our hurts and our baggages to other people. Because I'm sure you and I, um, you and I have definitely, okay, I know for myself have definitely brought that hurt to other people in whatever ways. And many times I ask God for forgiveness. Um, sometimes I obviously don't want to do it, but I know I've heard someone, you know, whether it's a church or outside the church, you and I all have done it. So it's not like this thing where we point the finger and be like, yeah, that person in the church, they really hurt me. They really bit me. So, you know, whatever, you know, that's really not the attitude. Attitude. The attitude is, you know, God, I've been in that role and yeah, that person hurt me. But you know what? At the end of the day, you know, we just need the grace of God. And um, I pray that person will find healing and um, find reconciliation. And um, I find that people that I've heard before in, in the past, may they find reconciliation and, and healing. Um, may they not be affected by what I've done. And going forward, God, help me not to be the person that brings bad taste, bitterness, and, um, and all this thing upon people. May I be the person that brings freedom. May I be the person who brings the grace of God, the love of God, not with all those baggages of traditions in the past in the church, but the things that uh, empower people um, to move to towards a closer relationship with Jesus and experiencing the power of the Holy Ghost. Um, that's where I want to be. Um, I'm not there yet, but I want to continue to be on that path. May you and I um, pray in such a way that we can be on that path, to be an encourager, to not be a discourager. Because unfortunately, sometimes we think that we're actually doing God a service and being uh, telling people, you know, like how many times do you hear people say, oh, you know, slow down, you know, like, oh, don't get so uh, um, uh, excited about this because, you know, you actually really dis discouraging a person with going to the things of God. 
right? We think, you know, in the Bible, it says that there'll come a time when people will kill you, kill people who are in the faith, thinking they're doing God a service. I mean, look at what's happening in the Middle East and, 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 and the uh, extremists, uh, the Islamist, uh, Islamic um, extremists. They think they're doing the will of God when in fact they're really not. So you and I could be thinking that we're actually helping people of God, straightening people out when, when we're really not. So uh, may you and I not get into that role. Um, so I want to encourage you those three points. Um, if you get a dream, pursue the interpretation, seek God for it. And number two, um, don't don't bring preconceived notions and baggages. Uh, don't bring uh, preconceived notions about other people. Number three, don't bring your baggage and your hurt to other people and discourage them. Rather, be an encourager. Um, I hope that dream of mine somehow encouraged you in some way. Um, I pray for you. You pray for me. Um, uh, in this world right now, you know things are really going crazy. Um, we really need to be praying for the direction of God and. Um, and um, just the protection of God and the guidance of God and the protection of the people of God and what we are to do in the coming future. Meanwhile, we live in a life that we have to live and wherever God has called us uh, in any area of vocation. Okay? Bless you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Until next time, take care and God bless you.